Peace family, this is your brother Malcolm Flex TV in a discussion with our brother Katazar from the ISUPK and I completely destroyed his scholarship and made it look like child's play. The brother did not come prepared and he was actually preaching his dogmatic theological preference as if it was going to work in the intellectual ring with the member from the Nation of Islam. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Peace. I'm gonna give you what you want. I'm gonna give you what you want. Dunk apartment. Okay. Let's get it. Let's go. Can you believe in the Bible and the Quran? Or is it a contradiction? I say no. One thing is because we are the new people of the covenant, of the new covenant. If your interpretation doesn't match up with the timeline, you have to go back and fix your interpretation. And that's my <clears throat> argument to my Hebrew Israelite brothers, because we believe that they are the people of the new covenant, but they teach in the old covenant doctrine. Why do I say that? Because there's a revelation timeline and that revelation timeline. We will start it. At uh, Abraham, why? Because he's the father of the Abrahamic faiths who the Most High made his first promise or covenant. I won't say first promise or covenant, but made, you know, starting with Abraham with the Abrahamic faiths, right? Then to Moses around 3,500 years ago, he was the prophet of the Israelites who the Most High made his covenant. Then Jesus, the 2,000 years ago, he was a prophet who spoke prophecies and parables. Then we got prophet Muhammad of 1,400 years ago, the prophet of the uh, Arabian Gentiles. And then we also have Elijah, Elijah Muhammad, the messenger of the new covenant. Okay, so one thing that our brothers don't understand is that these three books come out of a, a big book, a bigger book. In the Quran, we call it Um Al-Kitab, or the mother book, or the mother of the books. And there's a verse in the Holy Quran, Surah 13, 38 through 39. We did send apostles before thee and appointed for them wives and children. And it was never the part of an apostle to bring a sign except as God permitted or commanded. For each period is a book revealed for each period is a book revealed god do does block out or confirm what he pleases with him is the mother of the book so the torah and tanakh if when we read in the holy quran um it says surely we revealed the torah having guidance and light by it did the prophets who submitted themselves to allah judge for the Jews and the rabbis and the doctors of law because they were required to guard the book of Allah. Then the gospel, it refers to it and it says, and we sent after them in their footsteps, Jesus, son of man, verifying that which was before him of the Torah. And we gave him the gospel containing guidance and light and verifying that which was before it of the Torah and a, gui and a guidance and an admonition for the dutiful. And then, of course, we have the Holy Quran that was also revealed in the same chapter, just a couple ver uh, a couple verses after the gospel. So all three of these books come out of a bigger book. And just to confirm it with the Bible, in Hebrews 10, 7, it says, Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. What is the volume of the book? What does it mean to be the volume of the book? Meaning that it would deal with the whole book. There would be a man who would, who would cover the prophecies of all of the major prophets out of the mother book. Abraham's promises and covenants from the Most High. So Abraham and his descendants are promised by the Most High that Abraham's seeds would be exceedingly Great nation before either child was even born. So when you go to Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 through 3, okay, 
God is making the covenant with Abraham with his seed. So many of the times our Hebrew Israelite brothers only deal with Isaac, but Ishmael is mentioned several times um, uh, 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 being made a great nation. And not only uh, Ishmael was, was, was even referenced, but there was an angel on two occasions who visited Abraham and who visited um, uh, Hagar and told them about the coming of Ishmael. And angels only really do that um, for people who has a significant purpose, like when they did it for Jesus, when they did it for John the Baptist, when they did it to Isaac, when a great person is being born. And a lot of times you see in the scriptures, angels is going to their parents, letting them know that that great child will be born. OK, so now why did I say that the Hebrew Israelites are the people of the new covenant, but they teach an old covenant teachings because the Jews broke the Mosaic covenants purpose of the Mosaic covenant, the Mosaic covenant made with Moses and the Israelite people at the Horeb Sinai, which is found in Exodus nine chapters 19 through 24. And the book of Deuteronomy contains the foundation of the written Torah and the oral, oral Torah. In this covenant, God promises to make the Israelites his treasured possession among all people, Exodus 19, 5, and the kingdom of priests and a holy nation. If they follow God's commandments as part of the terms of this covenant, if they follow God's commandments as part of the terms of this covenant, God gives Moses the Ten Commandments in Exodus 24, 8. These are later are later established or elaborated in the rest of the Torah. So there are terms of, of, of having this covenant with the Most High. But Israel broke them. At one point, Israel was the apple of the Most High's eye. But Israel began to break laws, commandments, and murder the prophets. So when you look at the bottom here, here are all of the Bible verses where they murdered the prophets. So Here's, here's some verses right here. It says, they provoked him. This is Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 21. <laughs> they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, the, the new gods that came newly whom your fathers uh, feared not. So when you go down a little bit to verse 20, it says, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy. Why jealousy? Because in Exodus, God said that he was a jealous God. So they said they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. So who are these people that the Bible is referring to that is considered a foolish nation? And, and Jesus said in Matthew 21, 43, therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And he said unto him, oh, uh, yeah. If it, and he said unto him in uh, Luke, Oh, I think this one is Luke 1631. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be dissuaded or persuaded. Right. This part is cut off, but that's what it says at the end. So they didn't even listen to Moses and the prophets. They, they, they did not listen to the commandments and they murdered the prophets. Right. So but they still teaching old covenant teachings and doctrines, trying to get us to follow those doctrines. But it, it doesn't apply to us in this time. But who is this? Who is this foolish nation? This foolish nation was referring to the Arabs. This was the foolish nation. Why? Because they made a, a, a covenant with a Gentile prophet. So I have references of Prophet Muhammad being mentioned several times in the Bible and the Holy Quran verifying it. Isaiah 29, 12 and Holy Quran. But yeah, Isaiah 29, 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this. 
I pray thee, and he said, I am not learned. So this is given to, there's a book given to a prophet who is illiterate, okay? And the Holy Quran verifies it in uh, 7, 157 and 7, 139. It says, those who follow the messenger Muhammad, whom they mention in their own scriptures. And it also says, those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find, found, found mentioned in their own scriptures, in the law and the gospel. Okay, so I just mentioned, mentioned it once in Isaiah. Okay, and he was also mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, 18. And now, uh, John chapter 1, 19 through 21. Just and so this is- Five minute warning, brother. Just yes, 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 thank you. And um, and this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are thou Elijah? He said, no, I am not. Are thou that prophet? And he answered, no. So they was also referring to a prophet. And in Songs of Solomon 5, 6, he's also mentioned as Muhammad Dean. Okay, in the Songs of Solomon, and he's also mentioned in uh, Isaiah chapter 21 down here. So I'm going to keep moving a little forward because I'm, I'm running out of time. But Prophet Muhammad is the fulfillment of Isaiah 42, a prophet sent to the Gentiles. Okay, because this chapter is a key component. Right. So in Isaiah 42, 6, it says, and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. So he's given as a covenant, right? And uh, he's told to sing a new song. So when we know when the Muslims call the Adan, the call to prayer, they are singing this uh, prayer, giving praise to the most high all around the world. And the book um, in Isaiah 42, 11, it identifies his location in Arabia, in the Hejaz and in Medina. When it says the villages that Qadar does inhabit, Qadar is in Arabia, who's a, the second son of Ishmael, and uh, and it said, "Let the inhabitants of the rock sing." But the this uh, the rock is also uh, translated as Selah. Selah is uh, uh, Mount Selah in the city of Medina, right? But here's the key component component. In Isaiah 42, chapter 13, it says he was you, he 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 um he would use this prophet to provoke Israel to jealousy. It says, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man, he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. So I just showed you in the previous uh slide that there will be a people who the, the the most high said, and I will move them to jealousy with those which that are not a people. I will move them to anger with the foolish nation. And we know that these people, these Arabs at the time were idol worshipers. They were pagans. Okay. Because in Isaiah 8, uh, uh, Isaiah 42 verses 8 and 17 describes them. And it says, I am the Lord that is my name and my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So he was not a moon god. The god of the Quran is not a moon god. Okay? And uh, yeah, so we are the new people of the covenant. We, we, we are dealing with the new covenant now. We are not dealing with the old covenant, trying to hold people to old covenants, because most of our Hebrew Israelite brothers stand on the streets and say they're only dealing with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, let's deal with Jeremiah 31. Two minutes uh, remaining. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's deal with Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 33. It says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. And I will put Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. In the day that I took them out of the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write in it their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So um, 
And then I got some more stuff. I got some more slides, but due to time, I'm not going to deal with them maybe um, in another section, but that's, that's what I have so far. So how much time do I got? And I could probably just build just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, less than 30 seconds. I got a minute or less. You got a solid minute left. Good. Okay. Yeah. So again, um, I haven't even gotten to the point part where the book had been tampered with and the name of Allah has been taken out of the Bible. Okay, so but what I'm trying to do and show is, is that um, Prophet Muhammad is mentioned all throughout the book. Okay, so yes, it's okay for us to believe in the, Bi the Bible and the Quran because they are both one and the same and both gods are the same God. And I'll leave it at that. Now, family, I just gave out a PowerPoint presentation with slides. Okay, so I really came to this debate prepared. Now watch this. I uh I don't have any uh I don't have any slides. I uh I don't have any uh I don't have any slides. I uh I don't have any uh I don't have any slides. I uh I don't have any uh I don't have any slides. I so who comes to a formal debate unprepared with no slides, no PowerPoints? Okay, no sources at all. Who who comes to a debate like that? Very unprofessional. I uh I don't have any uh I don't have any slides. Oh hell no. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start my time now. So the whole point was is there contradictions between the two? I didn't hear any of this. It seems as though what you're trying to see is that they both go and paint the same narrative. That's not how this goes. That's why Isaiah 34 and 16 says, seek ye out the book of the Lord. There's only one book of the Lord. That's the scriptures, man. That's the Bible from Genesis on down to Revelations with the Apocrypha in between. And read, not one of these shall fail. Why does it say not one of these shall fail? Because everything inside these scriptures came to pass. That Quran don't have no prophecies. You understand? But the Bible has been predicting the future for the last six to eight thousand years. You understand? None shall want her mate. Meaning what? This book don't have a mate. You understand? Ain't nothing that you're going to give me after revelations that you're going to try to pair with this. The Quran is the new kid on the block. It's real easy to plagiarize someone else's writings when you came around in 622 AD. So this is thousands of years after the Old Testament and about 600 years, give or take, you understand, after the New Testament. For my mouth, it had commanded and his spirit had gathered them. The Lord ain't gathered a Quran straight up and down. So now Genesis 17 and 16, I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. This is what was said unto Abraham. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God unto thee, and for thy seed after thee, right? So let's see if the Quran lines up with this, right? So we're going to go to, hold on one second. This is Sora. Hold on. This is Sora 3 and 83. We believe in God and what he has revealed to us and what has been sent down to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and their offspring and what had been revealed to Moses and Jesus and all the other prophets by their Lord. First of all, notice it's calling their Lord, making a direct distinction between the two because our God is not Allah. You understand? We follow Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, straight up and down. We make no distinction between them and we submit to him and obey. Well, here's the thing. This is what the Quran's saying. I told you there was contradictions here. So let's see if there's a distinct difference between Ishmael and Isaac according to the scriptures because the Quran says there isn't. So now Genesis 17 and 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed and thou shalt call his name Isaac and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. What's his seed after him? You understand? Jacob. Jacob is the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. These 12 tribes is who the covenant was made with. You understand? And as for Ishmael. Now, remember, a minute ago, it says there was no distinction between the two. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I shall make him a great nation. I don't hear the covenant. There's a lot of nations on the earth. Listen, even Esau got a blessing. He was blessed with the sword. You understand? It doesn't just because you get a blessing doesn't mean you got the covenant. Verse 21. But you understand meaning what? Conditionally, 
My covenant will I establish with Isaac. You know what they say? If you hear but in a sentence, it means everything before that don't matter. Ishmael don't matter. Isaac is who the covenant is with. Right. Now I'm going to drop down to Genesis 21. It said it made no distinction. Genesis 21 and 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast in the same day Isaac was weaned. And Sarah, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which had borne unto Abraham, mocking, Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son. Who's the bondwoman? Hagar. Who's the son? Ishmael. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, with Isaac. And this is exactly what happened. Guess what? They got sent packing with some water. You understand? A little bit of trinkets. Here you go. You're gone. I thought there was no difference between the two. You understand? Who's lying here? The Quran or the Bible? Well, since the since the Bible came first, I would have to say that this is the authority. You understand? And that's why, once again, even the Lord said, listen to your wife in this moment. You understand? Drop down to Genesis 22 and 1. And it came to pass after all these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, Ishmael. Hmm. Thine only son, Isaac. Hold on, hold on. Is that what this said? Genesis 22 and 2. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee in the land of Morah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tend to thee. You, everybody knows this story. We don't hear about this about Ishmael. We heard that he would be a wild man. That word translated is a criminal. And that's that's what he's labeled as today. That's what he did. He is a wild man. You ever see the videos of them Arabs slicing themselves with the knives and all that crazy nonsense? That's not our people. You understand? So now this narrative continues to stay inside of the scriptures. This is First Chronicles 16 and 13. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. I don't hear Ishmael. I don't hear nobody else mentioned here. But you know what? We know that his servant is Israel. He wanted to bring up Isaiah. What happened in Isaiah? It talked about a servant. Who's the servant? The servant is Israel. Ye children of Jacob. This is the seed which came after him, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, our possessive pronoun. His judgments are in all the earth. Make sure y'all pay attention to when the Lord's talking about judgments in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, which he commanded to a thousand generations. Don't act like a thousand generations has passed. Don't act like our covenant went somewhere else. You understand? I'll, I'll save the, uh, that for the rebuttal. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath on to Isaac. The Quran said that there was no distinction. The Bible said that was a lie. There is a clear distinction here about our inheritance. Saying unto them, uh, matter of fact, excuse me, I skipped a verse. Verse 17. And hath confirmed the same for Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan a lot for your inheritance? Show me where Ishmael was given the land of Canaan. If he got the covenant, show me where the Lord was with him like he was with Moses, like he was with Joshua when they took Jericho, when they beat the giants in Ai. Show me that with Ishmael. You can't do it. Where were they at that time? You said it, brother. They were worshiping idols. They had a God, they had 365 gods, one for every day of the year, including that Kaaba stone. You understand? I'm going to drop down to verse 16 and 22, saying, touch, Mosiah and Christ, touch not mine anointed. Who's the Lord's anointed? He just told you it was Israel. And do no harm to my prophets. First of all, there, you cannot show me one heathen prophet inside this Bible. You can't do it. You Now all of a sudden the Lord's going to open it up to who? To Ishmael? Nah, I don't think so. So we also turned around and he brought up Moses. First Kings 8 and 55. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel, not Ishmael, of Israel, with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Who'd the promise go to? Who'd the covenants go to? This went to Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You understand? There hath not one failed, Word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hands of Moses, his servant. So now, once again, it brought up Moses saying that there was no distinction. What's the distinction with Moses? The promise went to Moses. Moses inherited that land. It was given to Israel. And then Moses gave us the law. 
Moses gave, and you know what was inside that law? Ain't no other nation going to rule over us. You understand? When you get in this land, you set a king over you who's from your brethren. Ishmael ain't from our brethren. That's a separate nation. You understand? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Now, here's something that the Quran did get right. You understand? I'll just, I could give a little bit of credit where credit is due, right? Can I do that? You understand? Hold on. Let me get this Sora for you. So now we're going to go to Sora 2 and 122. Children of Israel, recall my favor, which I bestowed upon you, and I exalt you above the nations of the world. Well, I wonder, I wonder if the Bible has anything to say about this, right? So this is Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art a holy people. That, holy, that word right there is kordash. It means separate. We're separate from the Ishmaelites. People unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are on the face of the earth. We're not equal with Ishmael. He cast the bondwoman and her son out. He got princes. We got a covenant. We got Canaan. We got the Holy Land. You understand? Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel against the whole family which i brought up out the land of egypt saying you only have i known of all the families of the earth not the world not the country not the land of the earth of the entire planet the lord being very specific here therefore i will punish you for all your iniquities can two walk together except they be agreed the bible and the quran can't walk together it's clear that they don't agree Let's go a little bit further. Now, you wanted to bring up the New Testament, right? That's what we want to do. Five minute warning for myself. You understand? Romans chapter nine, verse three. For I wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. This is nation. This is family. All skin folk ain't your kin folk. I don't care if the Arabs is brown. You understand? Habibi ain't get choked out for selling loose cigarettes and heroin out the bodega, but my brother Eric Gardner did. You can't pay us together. Now, who are these people? Who's his flesh? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, both covenants. You wanted to pull Jeremiah. Both covenants were given to Israel and the giving of the law and the service of God. What's the service of God? The priesthood. The prophets, this wasn't given to any other nation and the promises. Whose are the fathers? This is a family matter. You understand? Whose are the fathers and whom concerning as the flesh Christ came? Christ didn't come for no doctrine. He didn't come for no religion. He came for flesh, came for race, came for kinsmen who are Israelites. So now, not as though the word of God had taken none effect. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I missed something here. Who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. So be it. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect for they are not all Israel, which say they are of Israel. Everybody wants this covenant. Everybody wants to attach themselves to this. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they the children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. What does this mean? You need Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You need all three or nothing at all. Cut it out. You understand? So now, once again, you wanted to bring up angels, right? There was angels that was brought up. So I'm going to go to Galatians 1 and 6. I marvel that ye are so, excuse me, that ye are so soon removed from him that hath called you into the grace of Christ onto another gospel. You know what this, one of these other gospels is? Islam. That Quran was trying to be another gospel, a continuation of it. But the Bible says none shall want her mate, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. The Quran perverts the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. We who? The disciples, the prophets, from Moses all the way on down to Yahawashah and the 12 disciples. Hear that good. Though you preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Muhammad should be accursed from the Lord for what he did. That's not my words. That's the scriptures right there. So what you're starting to see here, I got two minutes left, is that even when it comes down to Christ, right? This is going to be my last uh, 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 scripture right here that I'm going to pull. And first, I'm going to come right over here. 
And this is what it says inside Surah 4 and 157. And they're saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. But another was made to resemble him to them. Let me tell you something. This script, this just said that he wasn't crucified. Is this, what, 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 what do you call it? What do you, what, no, 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 this is a lie. This is a contradiction. Why are you lying on the scriptures? So now, this is Mark 16 and 6. And he said unto them, be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. The Bible just said it was crucified. What are you lying on the Lord for? And if he wasn't, you understand, I got a minute left. I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase it. Then if he wasn't crucified, what's the whole point of, of, of Thomas doubting? Right. What's the whole point of him saying, I want to put my hands on his wounds? Right. You understand? If he wasn't crucified, he wouldn't have had no wounds on his hands. Wouldn't have mattered if he got stabbed in his side. Y'all are lying on the Bible. These two records, they contradict one another. The Bible is the authority. The Quran came around in 622 AD. It is real, real, real easy for you to make up a story when you got a direct point of reference. You understand? And what you're seeing here is that the Lord ain't deal with nobody but the nation of Israel. I yield there. Now, that whole time he just gave his theological preference and bias and chopped up and cherry picked the scriptures. Okay, okay. All right. My brother, you, you, you didn't throw me a few alley oops. Okay, uh, you know, you threw your brother, and, and, and y'all got the special effects going in the background, you know, brothers, bearing witness. I ain't mad at that. Yeah, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. <laughs> It's all good. Praise be to Allah, the most high. But y'all making it too easy for your brother tonight, man. Dunk apartment. You know, one thing about, you know, the Muslims, you know, we don't really like the religious gang banging. You know, it, you know, it's a whole lot of religious gang banging going on, you know, in the name of religion. We really don't do that. You know why? Because, again, like I said, we got the messenger of the prophet, I mean, the, uh, uh, of the covenant, Elijah. You know, and he and he came to make all the truths known and revealed in all of the books, right? But they say that the book ain't tampered with, and it ain't got nothing to do with a lot. Okay, next slide, please. The Jews, Masoretics, change scriptures in the name of God. Hear my surahs. Do you then hope that they would believe in you and a party from among them, Jews indeed used to hear the word of Allah, then altered it after they had understood it and they know this? Woe, woe then to those who write the book with their hands, then say, this is from Allah, so that they may take for it a small price. So woe to them for that with their hands right and woe to them for what they earn. Not only, not only, and this is from the book of God by our brother, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, not only did the Jews alter the Bible in an attempt to conceal the true nature of their black God, they also removed the true name of God, of that God, Allah. Yahweh is one of the many names of God used in the scripture. But his most perfect name, Allah, which represents the synthesis of all of his beautiful names, was consciously removed from the Bible. Such names as El Shaddai, El Elyon, El Olam, and Elohim are all pur purposeful corruptions of the name Allah. The above names are compound names composed of the name of God prefixed to an attribute. El is the presumed name of God, and El Shaddai is God Almighty. El Elyon is God the Most High. El Olam is God Everlasting, etc. El or Elo is the singular, or Elohim herein lays the, lies the deception. The fact is, El Elo and Elohim are purposeful corruptions of Al. Allah and Elohim. The word, the Hebrew words El and Elohim, right? Or the Hebrew letter Aleph written as an E is actually the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet called Aleph, which is an A, not an E, right? So we're gonna show the deception in the in the in, in the Quran reveals it when it says, and argue not with the people of the book, except by what is best, 
a save such of them as act unjustly. But say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you. And our God and your God is one. And to him, we submit. Oh, we're going to prove that he's one. Now, by um, Godfrey Higgins observes, I must now beg my reader to review what has been respecting the celebrated name of Al, Ala, Alin, and to observe that this was in all the Western Asiatic nations, the name both of God and of the Son. I must also beg my reader's attention to the observation at the end of chapter two, section four of this book relating to the word L as used by Sir W. Drummer. In the Asiatic language, the first letter of the word is the first letter of the alphabet A and not the fifth letter E. But we do not merely increase difficulties, we disguise and conceal absolute facts. Thus, it is a fact that the son and the, the, son and the God of Moses had the same names. That is, that the God of Moses was called by the same word which meant son in the Asiatic language. But by miscalling one of them El instead of Al, the or Allah, the fact is concealed. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it on the screen. This fact was concealed by a group of Jewish scribes called Tiberian Masoretists who developed the current vowel system. The Hebrew language is consonantal, possessing no written vowels. Occasionally, some consonants called the uh, matris lexionis were used to indicate vowel sounds. Right, so when we scooch, uh, go down just a little bit more, it was the it was the Tiberian Masoretics who concealed this fact. Masoretic scribes were scribes who added critical notes, masura, to the external form of the biblical text. During the fifth through the eleventh centuries, the Masoretic scribes resurrected the Hebrew language, which had been which has been dead since around 400 BC, being replaced by Aramaic as the popular language among the Jews. To fix the pronunciation of the words and denote vowel sounds, the Tiberian Masoretics, as opposed to the systems developed to the Babylonian and Palestinian Masoretics introduced a vowel system in which a number of dots and dashes are placed under the letter to represent vowel sounds. Here are the dots. The letter is Aleph. This is the word Aleph in God, right? And here's the word Elohim. The A in Elohim right here is silent, okay? And you can see the five dots under the A. It says, by placing the five dots under the letter Aleph, the letter is changed from an A to an E. And the words Al, Allah, and Alhim are changed to El, Elo, and Elohim. Thus, the name of God in popular Hebrew. McGregor Mathers in the Kabbalah revealed notes that Elo is written in Hebrew as Allah. In synagogue Hebrew, according to Higgins, 19th century Jews still use Allah and Alhim. Lloyd Graham, in deceptions and myths in the Bible, speaking on Elohim observes, the word comes from Elohim and means a council of the gods. Scholars Albert Churchward, as well as Gerald Massey, confirmed that the originals of the Hebrew El and Elohim possess an A as the first letter, not an E. So as a side note, the name of God in their sister languages of the Hebrew is Allah as well. So in Aramaic, so, so I stopped. No, no, no. In Aramaic, which is his mother, er, uh, mother Aramaic, which was the language Jesus spoke in Syriac, the name of God is Allah. These three languages are of considerable importance to the development of Hebrew theology. Okay, so we can we can prove without a shadow of a doubt that you say that these books is different, but I say they they come from the same source. That your God is my God. We have the same God. Okay. And also again, when we talking about the covenants, you, we can't, we can't make a contract with one another, make a covenant and a contract with one another. And then when we break the covenant and contract, then, um, everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. That's not how covenants work. That's why I read off Jeremiah 33, uh, 31 
through 33. Maybe I have, maybe I, yes, sir. So maybe I got to remind my brothers. Maybe I have to remind you, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Why are we talking about an old covenant? Why are we still dealing with an old covenant? Why? Because the, the whole purpose of uh, what's going on um, in the Bible after uh, Israel had broke the most high's covenants, they not, we're not dealing with those old covenants anymore. We're dealing with a new covenant, and the new covenant was given in Isaiah 42, a prophet sent to the Gentiles, and he is specifically described in the land of Kedar or in the land of Medina. Medina is where Mount Selah is, which is the home of the prophet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started, right? So now, let, let me tell you all something, right? This brother keeps bringing up the Masoretes, the Masoretes, the Masoretes. Well, let me tell you something that predates the Masoretes that talks about the name of the Most High, right? You can find the Tetragrammaton, which is the name Yahweh in the Hebrew, inside the Dead Sea Scrolls, which completely predates all the Masoretes. You understand? So for anybody to turn around and try to utilize that, it is pseudo for you to try to say that the Masoretes came and changed this and X, Y, Z, when ain't none of that true. You understand? Right. And even if I was to go inside the scriptures, Psalms 83 and 18, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Yahweh art the most high over all the earth. This is another clear contradiction. The point of this debate, right, was not who got the cup. Well, it kind of was who got the covenant, you understand? But more so was who is... Yeah, that's why I said you have to go back to the other point. You understand? The whole point was, does the Bible and Quran contradict? Can you follow both? I think that we prove that you cannot and that they do. You understand? It's been proven without a shadow of a doubt. I didn't see where, where, where even if you turn around, right, and try to keep the whole argument of the Lord's name, where are you showing me that it was changed who got the covenants or not? Where, like, where is anything that... Dunk apartment. So... Here's, here's some verses right here. It says, they provoked him. This is Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 21. <laughs> they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, the, the new gods that came newly, whom your fathers uh, feared not. So when you go down a little bit to verse 20, it says, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy. Why jealousy? Because in Exodus, God said that he was a jealous God. So they said they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. So who are these people that the Bible is referring to that is considered a foolish nation? And, and Jesus said in Matthew 21, 43, therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right. So in Isaiah 42, 6, it says, and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. So he's given as a covenant. I said that was addressed that you brought up. Here's the best part. I can't believe you read Jeremiah 31, right? right. Like twice, you understand? Jeremiah 31 and 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will establish with the house of Israel. After those days, say it the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. This is talking about Israel. This is not including any other nation. The Lord reestablished his covenant. That's why in Romans it said, to whom was given the covenants, the promises. Who was given that? Israel was given that. You haven't shown where it went to another nation. Right? So in Isaiah 42, 6, it says, and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. So he's given as a covenant. Matter of fact, here's the best part. Hebrews 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Who's the mediator of the New Testament? This new covenant that you're talking about, Christ is the mediator of it. 
that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament right. if i ask you to question who was under the first testament you're going to say israel that's why you keep saying but there was a new covenant there was a new covenant but here's the thing for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament he's the mediator for it you know what this means they which are called might receive the promise of internal inheritance if you weren't under the first covenant you're not under the new right. you understand this means ishmael is not involved inside this covenant right. this is why the scriptures say hath god cast away his people god forbid in the same chapter you pulled in jeremiah it says if the stars are no longer in the sky with those ordinances right. Then will Israel no longer be his people. Do me a favor. Open up your window. Look outside. The moon, the stars, oh. the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Orion's Belt. All oh, that's up there right now. You understand? You're going to wake up tomorrow. The sun going to come out tomorrow. I'm trying to tell you. You're going to see it. And here's something else. It also says if they explored the deep. This is why you got Jacques Cousteau. This is why they turning them expensive submarines into soda cans. Because they trying to search out the deep. They can't get that low. You understand? They can't search out them trenches. Israel shall forever remain the Lord's people. Here's something else that was amazing, right? And, 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 and this, is, this is why I thank the Lord for commanding General Yohanna and, and how he trained us on how to listen. You brought up something. You brought up a new song that was going to be learned. And you tried to compare this to the New Covenant, to the New Testament, right? So let's, let's read about this new song, Revelations 14 and 3. And they sung as it was a new song before the throne. And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn the song except for the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Right. So the only ones who was able on earth to be redeemed and sing this song was the hundred and forty four thousand. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well. Let's find out who the 144,000 is, shall we? <laughs> Revelation 7. So now, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. This is Revelation 7 and 4. And there were sealed and 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. One tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. One tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nep Nephthalim, which is Nephthali, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. I think you get the point. You're not going to see Ishmael included here because he wasn't under the first testament. So therefore, he's not under the new testament. Now, let me show you something, right? How much time I got left here? Oh, five minutes. That's a lifetime. So now this is yeah, God, what kind? This is this is Babylon and Timbuktu. Now let me tell you real history since you want to talk about plagiarism. When Muhammad was born, many of the Arabs were still worshiping the sun, stars, spirits, and idols. You understand? So now <laughs> On his business trips, he met Jews, Christians, and members of other sects. He interrogated them concerning the tenets of their religion. He frequented the environment of the Jews and their rabbis, mostly because they were merchants and an omnipresent group, right? So now he's dealing with Jews and Christians in his travels. So now this is how he decides to build his religion, Islam and Judaism. The prophet Muhammad adopted many principles and laws from the Jewish religion. First of all, the basic idea of monotheism, which is the belief in one God, the Jewish confession of unity of God is Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Yahweh Yahweh God. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That's where your whole Mohammedan slogan comes from. You understand? Muhammad adopted also the main details of the Jewish calendar, the Day of Atonement, the Sabbath, much of the Bible, and narratives from the Merish and from many points of the ritual law. Incidentally, the Jews pray three times a day facing the city of Jerusalem, and Muslims, true believers, pray five times. You stole everything from us and then bastardized it. You understand? And now, eventually, Muhammad, therefore, turned against the Jews and became their tormentor. You're following the religion of somebody who persecuted your own ancestors. You understand? Right. Right. So now, the, the two daughters of Judaism, the offspring of Judaism and Christianity is Islam. Muhammad tried to construct his religion as closely as he could after the Jewish religion. He favored the Jews by accepting many of their laws and traditions. When the Jews refused to be converted, he commanded his followers to stop turning to the holy city of Jerusalem in prayer, but rather turn to the holy city of Mecca. 
whole reason that you were facing Jerusalem first. Right. You understand? But he got in his feelings. You understand? He got in his feelings. And then now, because the Jews don't want to follow him because we serve the true and living God. You understand? Not a rock. You understand? He decided to turn around and face the other way. In order to win pagans into the church, Christianity adopted many barbaric customs and traditions. This is why Islam is just a musty version of Christianity. Wow. Likewise, Muhammad, to gain the loyalty of the pagan Arabs, adopted many of their beloved customs. The Kaaba stone and idol was to receive high regard in the new religion also, the pagan temple at Mecca was to remain a holy site. Let's read a little bit more. This is from another book. This book is called Satan's Angels. This now, so now it says the Arab, excuse me, the Arab of that day worshiped many gods of the sky, stars, moon, and even what they believed were sacred stones. The center of this stone reverence was in Mecca. A square structure of stone in Mecca became the holiest shrine in the world. When you read the Bible, we're not supposed to bow down to no dumb stones, no dumb idols. Leviticus 26 and 1, ye shall make you, ye shall make you no idols or graven images, neither rear up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down to it. You can look this up right now. For I am the Lord thy God. You can look this up right now. You're going to have an armed guard standing right next to that little Kaaba stone. These Muslims lining up to do their hajj and kissing that stone. And this is condoned inside of this book inside of this faith system, inside of this religion, when this is idol worship. And the Lord ain't down with none of that. You cannot follow. You can't serve two masters. You understand? You cannot follow the Bible and the Quran. The Quran contradicts the Bible. Matter of fact, you're talking about the same Quran that says, matter of fact, I got a minute left. I should be able to get this out just in enough time. I'm bust this down for you. All right? So now it says, this is sir 21 173 he has only prohibited to you carrying blood the flesh of swine and that upon the name of someone other than allah has been invoked that whosoever is compelled by necessity neither seeking pleasure nor transgression there is no sin on him this is saying if there is a dire strait you could eat pork uh, well let me tell you something uh, when you read inside the maccabees uh, the second maccabees the sixth and the seventh chapter our ancestors died rather than eat swine you understand? Because the God of the Bible is not one of compromise, where they turned around and said, we in this mess because we sinned against our forefathers. And you saw seven sons and their mother get fried, get uh, 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 arms removed, tongues cut out. You understand? F deep fried. And that's my time right there. Ain't no compromise inside this Bible, but there is in the Quran. Yes, sir. OK, so you made the claim. Okay, where would I? Where should I start? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with the us uh, worshiping the rock because you made you made you made a claim, a thorough mistake, and um, I'm surprised you didn't even come up here with no slides. You know, I mean, you know, it looks bad. So Cesare, I just not this ain't as far from a body bag, sir. All right, so you had brought up jeremiah the 31st chapter can you show me inside the verses that you pulled and read where any other nation outside of israel was mentioned to get that covenant answer it again what i'm, I'm just going to again. Again. Oh, again. In, inside jeremiah the 31st chapter that that you uh that you had gone to that you said maybe i have to refresh my brothers with you pulled this scripture twice in two rounds can you mm -hmm. show where this covenant inside the scripture that you pulled that any other nation was mentioned outside of the house of Israel? No, because it's no, because it's not in there. And I would say that you're using intellectual gymnastics because you because you said that I said, well, you well, you said that I never said that there was never a, another nation that was mentioned getting the covenant, and that is false. That's not that's not what I said. I read out Isaiah 42. And Isaiah 42 is specifically mentions. Isaiah 42, 6, it says, And give thee for a covenant of the people for a light unto the Gentiles. So we know that the Gentiles are anybody other than a Jew. That's it. And they identify those people when they said that they are inhabiting the land of Kedar or Selah. Okay, they tells us where, the, where those people are. Um, you kind of made it easy for your brother. Um, you mentioned that we worship a rock. Can you show me anywhere in the Holy Quran 
um, that it says that the Muslims worship a rock. And then after you go, I will respond um, after you go, dear brother. Okay, I appreciate you, right? So in reference, I'm going to start my answer now, right? So when you go inside the Quran, this is the second surah and 125, right? This is where all the Muslims reference and understand the Kaaba of Mecca. When we made the house, Kaaba of Mecca, a frequent place for men and a place of peace, make from the station of Abraham a place of prayer. We gave the following directive to Abraham and Ishmael. Purify. I'm going to make a clip out of you. <laughs> yes, I'm going to make a clip out of you. <laughs> Pur purify. I only got a minute, man. Pur this is like battle rap. Hold on, hold on. Y'all go get this work. <laughs> All right. Purify my house for those who are circumcised. So now what you're seeing here is that this place, this house, it is the Kaaba at Mecca. And this is why they go to make their Hajj there. So you ask for where it is in the Quran, it's right here. So now it's my turn. Yes, sir. And I and I thank you again for this because brother you haven't you haven't brought no powerpoint you haven't came with any real sources outside of that book and that book is very pseudo um so i thank you again for this opportunity throwing me these alley oops because you said that our god is a, is a rock god okay so i'm going to ask you a question about about your book and your religion because there are many contradictions in your book okay um so I'm going to read this and then I'm going to ask you my question so you have a clear understanding. Some Jews and Christians say the reason we use a star moon crescent is because we worship the moon. Well, according to Islamic history, when Prophet Muhammad restored monotheism in Arabia, the moon star crescent didn't exist. There was no crescent flag until 700 years later, which came from the Turkish Ottoman Empire in the early 1300s. So if Allah was a moon God, why didn't Prophet Muhammad use the moon as our crescent when he was here? Muslims are forbidden to worship the sun, moon, or any of the created things in the universe. Holy Quran 4137. And if his signs are the night and the day and the sun and moon, adore not the sun nor the moon, but adore Allah who created them. If he it is that you serve, Allah, a moon or a rock, Yet he forbids the worship of either one but the creator. Stop it. But the Israelites do worship the sun and moon. Isaiah chapter 3 verses 18. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their callus and their crescent moon and Jacob and the stone in Genesis chapter 28 verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon upon the top of it so why the jews and christians don't accuse jacob of worshiping the stone when he anointed the stone that's my question to you oh, okay um i have one minute to respond starting now first of all you completely butchered Isaiah, which is why I see why you don't understand Genesis. Isaiah 3 and 18 says, In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their coals and their round tires like the moon. This was given a comparison explaining it. You understand? This was not saying it was that it was the moon that they were worshiping or anything like that. It's saying that it was round. You get what I'm saying? Like that, that was the whole point of it. And, and here's the other thing, right? <laughs> Let me help you out with some. What you saw was an altar being made. You understand? And the altar is, is due to worship of the most high. This is where sacrifices are made. We sacrifice first fruits on altars. We sacrifice lambs on altars because these were ordinances that the most high commanded. However, the Lord did not command for us to circle a rock seven times and then kiss it and bow down to it. That's a minute. It said Kaaba. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the contradiction because the Kaaba is an altar as well. And we know that Abraham set up many altars throughout his travels. Again, um, we know throughout history that Abraham built altars 
wherever he traveled. That's what he did. So Muslims don't do not worship a rock. That's just that's just false. My question is, if the Holy Quran in Surah chapter three verses uh, Ayah three says, "He has revealed to thee the book with truth." verifying that which is before it, and he revealed the Torah and the gospel. How can you say by definition? Real quick. Let me pull up the definition. How can you say by definition that our book or the, the Holy Quran plagiarized the Bible when by definition plagiarism means the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own when the Holy Quran doesn't do that. All it does is verifies the books that came before it, just as Jesus did with the gospel, verifying the book that of uh, the Torah that came before what Jesus brought. So how, by definition, how can you say that the Holy Quran plagiarized the Bible? Is that your question? Yes. Okay, I'm going to start right now. Okay. Muhammad tried to construct his religion as closely as he could after the Jewish religion. He favored the Jews by accepting many of their laws and traditions. And when the Jews refused to be converted, he commanded his followers to stop turning to the holy city of Jerusalem in prayer, but rather turn to Mecca. He changed the Jewish feast, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which they had accepted for the month of Ramadan. Muhammad changed the Jewish Sabbath from Saturday to Friday. So now, once again, I'm giving you historical references where he went and looked at the religion before, because as I stated earlier, 20 seconds left, you understand that outside of him being an illiterate camel jockey on his business trips, he met with Jews and Christians and members of the sex. And one of the things that he adopted, the main thing was the idea and belief of monotheism. So the reason as to why I say it's plagiarized is because he built his oh that's that's one minute the word you, er, earlier right you pulled up in isaiah right so so th this is this is this is my question just just to see where you're coming from brother the word gentile is that a word that can apply to an israelite or is that only speaking of another nation based on my understanding it can apply to um Israelite, because I did find some verses where it did apply to some uh, to some Israelites, but it don't apply to no Israelites in Isaiah 42 because it specifically mentioned where these Gentiles would be. I don't know, but, but besides the uh, 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 the Arabs living in, in Arabia in the land of Kedar and the tribes of uh, uh, Ishmael, then you know the book don't it don't it don't say it. It's not in there. So the book is very specific where these Gentiles are. If, if they were in Judah, then I, I would concede that point. But it doesn't mention Judah. It mentions Arabia. And we have we have many sources proving where Qadar is. Qadar is in the Hejaz region, region where Prophet Muhammad was born. M Medina is the, the, the city of the Prophet where Prophet Muhammad did his hijra or did his famous flight from out of Mecca to Medina. That's that's one so, minute. So that's, yes, sir. Muslims did not plagiarize the Bible. That's just false. It may seem like a plagiarism because the God, because, because the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran are the same, but it's not a plagiarism. These are the same, this, this is the same God, right? Because the Quran doesn't take the work that's already in the Bible and try to pass it pass it off as if it's own. There are distinct differences. And the, the, the differences are because the Bible, I mean, the Quran is the criterion. The Quran is a book that makes a, the, a clear distinction between what has been tampered with in the Bible and what has not been tampered with in the Bible. So that's why it may seem like there's a difference. Uh, here's my problem with the statement that you just made, right? Is for example, I'm pulling out sources and references, right, and showing you where in history he adopted this from. 
I continuously hear things like the Bible was tampered with and no one ever brings any evidence up for it. They just bring rhetoric. You understand? So one, you'd have to actually not only prove that statement, but based off of what you stated before, right? I pulled two books. You said one of them was pseudo. Okay, if we get rid of one, what are you doing about the other one? This is why I brought two references. Okay, okay. So again, real quick, real quick. You didn't bring any references. You didn't bring any slides. Any, you brought nothing. You not take. You haven't taken notes, as far as I can see. And another thing, you said that I didn't mention where the book was tampered. I could, I could have sworn in my presentation I read where the book was tampered, and I read it for you again by Godfrey Higgins. I must now beg my reader to review what has been said respecting the celebrated name of God Al Al Alim. And to observe that this was in all of the Western Asiatic nations, the name both of God and of the Son. I must also beg my reader's attention to the observation at the end of chapter 2, section 4 of this book relating to the word L as used by Sir W. Drummond. In the Asiatic language, the first letter of the word is the first letter of the alphabet, A, and not the fifth, E. But we do not merely increase difficulties. Does, this question, we did, real real quick, quick, does, real quick, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm reading. Let does, me finish. Before, before you read, brother, does, brother, you brother read. I'm, I, I just, I just read my reference. I'm gonna let you get out. But does this predate the Dead Sea Scrolls? Brother, 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 brother. You gonna let me read the reference? Does it? Does the reference predate the Dead Sea Scrolls? What, what do you mean? We are dealing with the language. You're I'm going direct, sir. I'm going directly into the Hebrew. But you were talking about the Maserates, and the Maserates comes damn near a thousand years after the Dead Sea Scrolls. Ex ex exactly. They changed the text. The text that y'all reading out. What are you talking about? The, this is this is this is what I'm trying to help you out with, right? Like brother, if you brother, actually go and you no, know, I'm completely right. You understand? And 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 this is this is this is why I'm trying you're to help wrong, you. sir. I'm I'm gonna let you get it out, and then I'm gonna body bag you real quick. Go ahead. You're not going to body bag me again. The name of God was changed in the Bible. And I read and I and I already read the sources to you. It's already there. Again, it's before not, you cut me off, the, 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 the Lord's name is Jehovah inside Brother. the Bible. The reference that you're pulling up. Please, please show a source. You haven't showed us a source yet. Please show the source. The Dead Sea Scrolls is the source that I'm talking brother, about brother, right show now. It, show if it. I show you inside, it. If I show you inside the scriptures today, right? You, once again, I showed Go you ahead. before, right, where it says that thou whose Go name alone is Yahweh. You're going to see the Tetragrammaton. You're going to see Yahweh all throughout. Now, now let's deal with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Bro. Just First ask, of all, just hold on, hold on, hold on. The Dead Sea Scrolls were, were written by the Essenes. The Dead Sea Scrolls were written by the Essenes, bro. And, and, they, and it was found in 19... Bro, you know, you totally mixing apples with oranges because the Essenes was there during the Pharisees, sir. So we know, so so we know... The Essenes predate the Masterates. No, no, no. No, um, listen to what I'm saying. Reference. Listen to what I'm saying. They were there doing the Pharisees. They were there speaking the the the, 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 the Aramaic. They were there speaking the Hebrew. Okay, so we know that the Masoretes came later and changed the text. We know that. So what we saying that the book that y'all reading from now today has been tampered with. That's a fact. What well, brother Kataza is attempting to do is he think that your brother is ignorant. I don't know what I'm talking about, but again, you know, he hasn't cited any source at all. I've already read these sources off. And um, so this is nothing that I'm making up, but he thinks that he can try to play off my ignorance, kind of like uh, the Sunni Orthodox Muslims thinking that we don't know the language or know the history of language. But the issue is with these brothers is that they don't know history. Okay, and you know, we get some of our documents from our uh scholar and historian, uh, student minister Dr. Wesley Muhammad. So, if you take the time and read uh, uh, the pages that I have on the screen, you will see that these are primary sources with footnotes. Brother has not offered anything, um, to uh refute anything that I'm saying, but what he's trying to do is he's trying to mix up 
the histo the historical timeline with the Masoretics and the in the actual original Hebrew. But watch how um, I prove him wrong, and watch how he actually helped me prove my point, and we exposed them, and we exposed the truth that the name of Allah is actually in uh, written in the Bible. So keep watching. Y'all see he just body bagged himself? No, I did not. Y do y'all see this? See. You can use the word body bag, but you have no sources. You haven't you haven't shown one slide yet. What is you body bagging? He's talking he's talking about slides. If you need to look on the screen and the books. Okay. Just, and, and, just because you use the word body bag don't mean you won the debate. Period. You can say body bag all day. That don't mean you won. You ain't showed not one slide. All right. So 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 this this is what I was trying to ask you the entire time, right? You want slides, all that. All right, listen. You haven't addressed shit that I even said in my first two rounds. Outside of that, because his, of dogma, when, you when just you see, <laughs> when you see when you see the Lord inside the text today, modern day, what is the equivalent to that word in the Hebrew? Say it again. When you see the Lord, all capital letters, you understand. For example, you might see the Lord thy God, the Lord. What is that word in Hebrew, present day, maybe, that you maybe, read? Maybe, maybe, maybe you can answer that for me. Help us out. So are you saying that you cannot answer it and you don't know? That's why I'm asking you to say it. Go ahead. You okay. got it. Let the record show that he doesn't <laughs> know. Modern day, right? Mm -hmm. and, and once again, the majority of the text that we read is from the Masoretes that he keeps trying to say changed it. It's going when it says the but Lord thy God. They when, it, when it says the Lord thy God, it's it's Yahweh Allah Yanawa. When it says the Lord thy God, it's it's Yahweh Allah Yanawa. When it says the Lord thy God, it's it's Yahweh Allah Yanawa. When it says the Lord thy God, it's it's Yahweh Allah Yanawa. When it says the Lord thy God, it's, it's Yahweh Allah Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Yahweh Yahweh God, hear O Israel, the Lord of, you understand? That is, wait, 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 say it again, say it again. Allah Haya Nawa. Allah Haya Haya. You just said it, brother. Or with you, or with you, no. You know I'm surgical with this bitch, Jake. How you want it, dog? So, what you're seeing is Yahweh is his name. No, what's his full name? What's his full name? This is the whole point. His name is Yahweh. Uh, what Allah, else? Allah, 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 okay, is, Allah. I'm to help you is our Allah. Our. Who did you think you were coming to debate?